In this video, I will show you how to prevent players from peeking through walls in your VR game by either pushing them away or in part 2 by fading screen to black that I will add to my wall climbing mechanic. Hi, I'm Peter and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. Now, I'm assuming that you are using the XR packages from Unity which uses character controller for the player movement in your game. If you don't, this solution still should be helpful to some degree. The first step for both the pushback and fade out effect is to detect when our camera is colliding with an obstacle, so for example with a wall. To do that, we can shoot three ray casts forward, left and right from the player's head to detect any potential collisions. To achieve this, we are going to create a new script called Head Collision Detector. All the scripts shown in those videos will be available on GitHub, the link will be in the description. First, add some fields that we will need to run our logic. Float detection delay parameter set to 0.05 will help us to optimize our code by running our detection at intervals. Next, we are going to have a float detection distance to know how far to shoot our rays and a layer mask detection layer to specify what types of objects do we want to detect. We will have a list of raycast hit, a property called detected collider hits, where we are going to save the detected colliders and this will allow other scripts to access this list. Lastly, I'm going to have a private float current time, this will be a helper field. When we have our fields, we need to create a new method, private list of raycast hit, perform detection. It will take in vector 3 position, so where we should start shooting our raycast, Float distance, so how far should it go, and layer mask, so what objects should it hit. We will need to have a new list of raycast hit, detected hits equals new, and a list of directions, so vector 3, new, transform forward, transform right, and transform right with a minus, so basically left direction. When we have all that, all we need to do is, sh is shoot our raycasts, so raycast hit hit will be our variable for each dear in directions, we're going to check if physics.raycast from the position in the direction with the output as out hit in the dis with the distance specified here and with the mask specified as well, we're going to detect any colliders. And if we have detected one, this will return true, so we are going to add the raycast hit object to our detected hits list. We will need to have a raycast hit to get the normal value from the hit point to get the direction in which we should push the player backwards. So this is the reason why we have a list of raycast hit. And we are going to basically return it. Now we need to call this method in turn somewhere. So to do that, we are going to start by calling in the start the detected collider hits. So our property equals the result of this method to initialize our script. We are going to pass the transform.position, so the position of our camera. So we need to place this script where our camera is and the detection distance and the detection layers as other arguments. Now in the update, we are going to basically do the same, but with a delay. So current time, our helper float value plus equals delta time. And if the current time is greater than the detection delay, we are going to reset the current time and call again the code from our start method. So detected collider hits, we are going to assign this property to the result of our performed detection. Now to be able to see how this works, I have created this Ondro Gizmos method. Basically, if application is playing, so if we are inside the game, we're going to set the color to be green. And if the detected collider hits count is greater than zero, this means we have detected something, we're going to set the color to red. And when we have it, we are going to draw a wire sphere at the position of our camera with the detection distance so that we can visually see if we are colliding with something or not. Now to draw our raycasts, just to show you how we are shooting them, I'm going to again recreate our directions list, set the color to be magenta, and for each direction I'm going to just use gizmos, draw ray, transform position with a direction. Those will be a bit longer than the detection rays, but I just want to show you how do they look. If you have all this or we have, if you have copied this code from GitHub, just save the script and go back to Unity. Now what remains is to find our camera in our XR interaction setup, here it is, main camera. I'm going to just right click and create an empty object, call it detector. And I will make sure that the transform is reset and I will drag my new script here. Now we can set the detection layer. I have set my obstacles and walls to be on the layer obstacle. 
script i'm going to set it here and this should now work so let's press play if everything went well in the scene view if you have gizmos enabled you should see that three ray casts are shot from our camera and if we try picking through a wall we are going to see that the sphere turns red if it turns green if we go too far this means that we are shooting a ray cast inside the collider i'm going to show you how to fix it in the next video when we talk about the fade out effect now we are able to detect if our camera is colliding with an obstacle or for example a wall so we can implement any effect that we want in this video we are going to continue implementing a pushback effect in the next one we are going to work on a fade out effect since that one will require us to also know if we are inside a wall inside a collider or not so let's start working on our pushback effect to handle the result of our collision detection, I'm going to just create a new script called Head Collision Handler. First, we need to add some fields. We will need a serialized reference to our head collision detector, which has a list of colliders that, we, that were detected. Next, since I have mentioned that we will need to have a character controller to push it back, we have a reference to a character controller from our XR setup. And lastly, we are going to have a float pushback strength to be able to modify how powerful our pushback is. When we have that, what we need to do is calculate the pushback direction using the normals of our raycast hits. The idea is that if we are shooting a raycast in a direction of an obstacle, the normal from the raycast hit will be acting in the opposite direction. So if we hit two walls at the same time, what we can do is add those two normal vectors. So going from the wall to the uh, direction of a player, and we are going to get the uh, sum of those vectors, which is the direction in which if we push our player, uh, the player will be pushed away from both of the surfaces that we have hit. So we are going to create a private vector three calculate pushback direction method that takes in a list of raycast hit collider hits we are going to acquire it from our detector we're going to create a vector 3 combined normal equals vector 3.0 loop for each raycast hit hit point in our collider hits and thanks to it being a raycast hit we can ask it for the combined normal to be plus equals new vector 3 hit point dot normal which is the normal direction opposite to our raycast dot x zero and normal dot z now we need to have zero because we want to push our character in the horizontal plane rather than up or down. So this is why we have zero instead of the y value of our normal. And if we combine those, we can return it as a calculate pushback direction. With that, all we need to have is an update method that will react whenever, whenever the detector has detected some colliders. We're going to calculate the pushback direction calling our calculate pushback direction method passing the detector.detected collider hits. Next, we're going to have a debug.drawray to visualize our pushback direction. We're going to use the position of our character and the pushback direction.normalized and color.magenta. And we're going to use character controller reference to move it in the pushback direction normalized. And we are going to multiply it by the pushback strength and to smooth it, we are going to use time.delta time to keep pushing the player until it stops colliding with the surface. If you have all that, just save the script and go back to Unity. In the hierarchy, we can select our main camera and add to it our head collision handler, assign to it the, the detector, and the, the character controller will be the XR origin usually, and the pushback strength can be 1. With this done, we can press play. And now, if we try pushing our head through the wall, we should be pushed away. Now, if we try climbing and try using the same method, it will not work that great. That is why in the next video, I want to show you how to implement a fade out effect so that we can turn our screen black when the player uses a climbing mechanic or just moves without using the character controller. If you want to learn more about Unity or just want to help me out, check out my video courses, the link will be in the description. See you in the next part.